The more that I live and the more people I meet, I have yet to meet a person who doesn't have some form of social anxiety. Hi guys, so today I'm coming at you with a video that was requested quite a bit, um, especially during this time of social distancing. The subject is, as you might be able to tell, how to be okay with being alone, being by yourself. Just a disclaimer, I think that this is like a oddly nuanced thing. It seems very simple, but it actually has a lot of layers to it. And so what I want to talk about today is more like the inner critic. Being alone, you have to consider also your safety as far as where you're living, what you look like, who you are, so many different things. So I can't even begin to touch on that, but that like inner voice, any of that self doubt, if that's what's holding you back from enjoying time by yourself, that's kind of what I want to talk about. But also if you have different um, experiences, please leave them down below because I actually got a lot of feedback from people from other cultures where being alone is actually just really looked down upon. Being from the US and then living in Korea, it's kind of seen as like an independent thing, but some cultures, there's actually an extreme negative connotation, like there's something wrong with you, which I've never experienced. So if you want to chat about it, I know a lot of people are living in that that kind of situation. So if you have any tips, that would be really, really helpful. And I hope this just opens the conversation. You guys gave me so many interesting things to think about on Instagram. So thank you for all of your replies. A pattern sort of emerged. There were people who had issues with being alone in public. And then there were people who had problems simply being alone by themselves. This might be a little bit long, but I'm hoping this can just be a nice little chat. Also, full disclaimer, I'm an only child, so got a lot of replies from only children. We were born alone, so <laughs> that's just how we roll. Let's dive in. So we're gonna start with the issue of being alone in public and by far, the most common response that I got was thinking that everybody is looking at you, everybody is judging you. That made me think of a couple things. So this is gonna be a little bit jumbled, but I hope it makes sense in the end. So first and foremost, with being self-conscious, with feeling like people are always looking at you. I was the most self-conscious person probably up until I went to college. It was always body related. I actually felt more uncomfortable around people. I felt better being alone. My question to you is if you are like this, if you do feel like everyone is staring at you at all times, if you're with your friends, because this was in my case, even if I was with people, I still felt that way. They might distract me a little bit, but at the end of the day, I still felt incredibly uncomfortable in my skin and I felt like people were looking at me and judging me, etc. That's just something to think about. I don't, it's not advice necessarily, but whether you're alone or with people, if you're still feeling self-conscious, like being alone isn't the root of it, you just need to deal with, in general, um, your self-confidence. Even for me now, like even though I am I like going out, I'm like fully comfortable by myself. There are days when I just wake up on the wrong side of the bed, I'm not feeling really good about myself. I can notice the days when my mental health isn't good and that's when I think people are judging me when I'm out and about. Once you kind of recognize that, that you can track, you know, like, oh, it's, I'm not feeling good about myself, so I think other people are thinking bad about me. You really learn that everything you're thinking other people are thinking, because none of us are mind readers, everything that those other people are allegedly doing to you is completely a reflection of yourself. You're controlling it. And if you do, on the 100% off chance, have a person that looks at you and like rolls their eyes and is like, oh my god, you're a loner. Like, first of all, they have no manners and they should be embarrassed. But also that's a reflection of them. They're clearly not on a level in which they're okay with being alone. If they see someone by themselves and they think that that's a negative thing, that's just proof that they're probably in the same boat as you are. If they were alone, they'd feel super awkward as well. At least you're working on it, like you're striving to be independent and comfortable in your own skin. One other thing that helps, um, I'm gonna ask you to visualize with me. Can you remember a person that you saw walking by themselves or eating by themselves recently? And if you can, 
why? First of all, I can't remember anybody's face. If I saw them again, I would not recognize them. But second of all, the only people that I remember is because they looked really cool and I wanted to talk to them, honestly. Like nobody remembers, it just like washes out of your brain. You can't remember people that you see on the street. The people who stuck in my mind, first person that pops into my head is like just a couple weeks ago, I was at a cafe and there was this girl sitting in the corner. She had the coolest outfit on and she was reading a book by herself. She just had her little teacup. And I just like desperately wanted to go up and talk to her. She just seemed so interesting and so cool. That's the only time that I remember people who are by themselves is when they like look really great. So if people remember you, kind of a compliment. And related to me wanting to go up and talk to people, that's actually how I've met a lot of friends here. Yeni from Matcha Cha, that's how I met her is I sat in her cafe and she was so curious about me that she just came over and we talked for hours. Now, you know, I gained a friend in this city where it's so difficult to make friends. People tend to either not see you at all, which is great, or they find you intriguing. So either one of those is honestly fabulous. Only person that's judging you is you. But like I said, even me, I still get those days where I'm like, oh man, I feel watched. It just takes practice and it also takes recognizing that voice in your head and telling it to shut up. Going back to that eating alone thing, for me, I typically have my phone or a journal or a book as a companion. And eating alone, I mean, what's it? It's 15, 20 minutes. I do, however, there was one reply that said, it's a bummer that when you order food for delivery, you have to meet a certain minimum or whatever. Um, I feel that. I don't know how to help that because I suffer from it as well. And kind of ending on this like people are watching you kind of thing. Just a light bulb moment that I had once before I moved to New York for university, but I was there visiting. I remember I was on the subway and I was sitting there fidgeting as hell. Just that feeling of you simultaneously don't want to move, but you also have to move. That was me. For some reason, I looked up and looked around. Everyone on that car was alone. There was not a single person who was not solo. In that moment, I suddenly was like, what the hell? <laughs> like, why am I freaking out? Everyone else is alone and there's no way that they're all judging me, little old me, like who the hell am I on a New York subway? Like the most basic girl ever. Why would they give me a second glance at all? Nobody cares about anything in New York. And so I think if we just get out of our heads a little bit and you look around, you can see like there are people who are solo and you, you probably don't even notice them. That's the thing. Just start to recognize it's not that big of a deal because you don't even notice when other people are alone. Sorry, this is such a mess. Adding on to the people watching you eat, somebody also said that they feel anxious. They're fine usually, but they feel anxious about ordering food and coffee alone. So I can tell you as somebody who worked in the service industry, I actually got incredibly nervous when groups of people would come and I would have to like serve them. I actually really preferred it when it was a solo person. Just saying, even if you're really nervous, you honestly might be helping out the person that you're talking to with their anxiety. That's just something to think about. You don't know how your actions might be positively benefiting somebody else. The more that I live and the more people I meet, I have yet to meet a person who doesn't have some form of social anxiety. So just know that probably most of the people around you are dealing with some kind of insecurity. So you just never know how you're helping somebody else. This one's kind of hard. I got, I did get this one a lot and it is um, wanting to share experiences with someone and someone specifically said, a journal doesn't cut it for me. So there goes my advice of bringing a journal with you. This whole idea of doing things and wanting to have someone there to share it with, um, it's actually the reason why I started YouTube. I best friend, the person that I spent literally every waking moment with, moved back home. And I was suddenly was like, wait, wait, wait. I still wanna do the things that I love, but it feels really weird not having someone there. So I started taking my camera and that's where we are. Here we are, yay. So there are ways that you can share it, um, whether it's later, if you are interested in photography or making YouTube videos or writing in your journal, even if it doesn't work for you. Mm -hmm. But also before I even had social media, I had so many inside jokes with myself when I would travel. Like, oh my God, I have so many memories from being on the train in New Jersey and just seeing the weirdest, weirdest things go down. And I could laugh about it 
with myself. Something about having it just for me um, almost makes me feel even more like my own best friend, like the fact that I can have an inside joke, this memory that's just mine. But also sometimes, here's a tangent for you, warning, there are so many moments where I see something funny happen and I look over and I make eye contact with a stranger and we laugh, like we share that moment. Those are the most magical moments ever. I remember one time specifically, I was on the D train going home, going back up to the Bronx, and these adorable girls got onto the subway car. And a lot of times if there is a performer on the subway, um, sometimes it's a little dangerous. There are like break dancers that will straight up kick you in the face, not on purpose. So we saw like these little girls come on and like there was this collective sigh like oh how fun on the d train finally they were like we're gonna perform a song for you and everyone's jazzed you can feel the energy and they sit down and they start the cup song i got my ticket for the long way round it was going viral at the time and everyone hated this song and so the second they started you just felt the energy just drop in this car and everyone's just looking at each other like I'm getting off at the next stop, like kill me now, you know? It was so funny and like that kind of thing, it doesn't matter if I had my best friend next to me, like it was a this collective hilarious thing that happened. So sometimes I totally feel you. I'm like, yes, I, I would really like to share this with someone or I'm out and ordering food is difficult because they only serve two servings. So yeah, that is just honestly a bummer, but if you keep your eyes open and you're like willing to share a smile with a stranger, a lot of times there are moments that you can you can share, you can experience with someone and it's almost kind of funnier. That's my tangent, but yeah, that's that's a that is a difficult one. Don't have too much advice. Okay, so this one I am going to talk about in both the being alone in public and being alone in private. A little hesitant to talk about it because everybody deals with anxiety in different ways and there are so many different levels to it so many triggers so many it's it's such a personal thing i'm just gonna be quick <laughs> but my my main advice is just that it takes practice so for example if you get anxiety about being out in public and you don't even want to talk to anyone once we're allowed to you can maybe order a movie ticket online so that you don't have to talk to anybody just show the ticket taker and you go and you sit in a room with strangers in the dark, nobody's paying attention to you. Movies are excellent. Um, a lot of people say they don't like it. I, I live for it. Nobody's paying attention to you. Even if they try, they can't even really see you. And it's creepy if they're looking for you. So that's like stranger danger and just get out of there. But if you're able to do that, maybe next time you can do something else and something else and something else. It's really just a thing that you need to practice just like anything else when you're dealing with anxiety. Even if you're meeting your friends somewhere, be alone a little bit first so that you just have to make it until 4 p.m. when you meet your friends. Maybe go somewhere at 3.30, something like that. Um, level, level your way up. It will slowly become easier. Some days you might have a bad day, um, but yeah, it's, it's really like a, a practice makes perfect kind of thing. And practice doesn't even make perfect in this case. But also know that you are not alone at all because that was one of the most common replies to this is having to deal with anxiety so yes and last but not least i don't really have advice about this but i got a couple replies that said similar things so i just want to read it because they were so interesting to me first one is i think i feed a lot upon being appreciated and when i'm alone i don't feel that as much and then the second one is i realize that i feel worthy when I'm surrounded by other people. In some ways, I look for self-validation through other people, and I never realized this until this year when I was forced to spend a lot of time on my own. And yeah, I totally agree with this. I think especially I'm an introvert, but um, a lot of responses came from people who are extroverts, and you get so much of your energy from other people, and that's just a personality trait. But I think it's a little different gaining energy from others and gaining self-validation from others. I think those are two different things. Being able to know who you are just by yourself is such an important thing. We're all different people. Like I know that when I am with my best friend, my personality, I like go up 10 different levels. I'm a different person than I am when I'm by myself. And I think a lot of people tend to like who they are 
around other people more. And so again, it just takes practice, but learning to love the person that you are when you're just home alone by yourself is something that's incredibly important. And um, I will leave you with a lyric. <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing this. From Lord, I remember when I heard this in her song, Liability. I'm gonna kind of paraphrase it. I guess I'll go home into the arms of the girl that I love, the only love I haven't screwed up. We slow dance in the living room, but all that a stranger would see is one girl swaying alone, stroking her cheek. Love yourself, buy yourself flowers, dance with yourself, learning to love just that one person because at the end of the day, we're all that we de most definitely have at all times. It's so important. So I really hope that we can all reach that point. Here I am reading sad song lyrics to you guys. Where has this video gone? Okay, part two. <laughs> Undeniably the tougher part, I think. Being uncomfortable, being alone, in private, just with yourself. The overwhelming response, which is, again, I'm nervous to talk, like to give any advice on this. Being alone means less distractions, which means I turn to my anxious thoughts, my dark thoughts, my overthinking, I begin to spiral. And yeah, honestly, I'm sure we all have these just self-destructive tendencies. Like I know what makes me anxious and I know how to get myself there. And sometimes I do, but Again, I hate, I, my most used word for this is gonna be practice, but with practice, with time, with destroying yourself many times over with your overthinking and your spiraling, the good thing that comes out of that is you can recognize it. And I know you probably already know how to. If you're asking this, if you have recognized that with these quiet moments, your thoughts tend to go a certain way, I know that you can recognize when it is starting. And that's where we need to go from. <laughs> we have the power to stop it. And like I said, everybody's dealing with their own thing. So I'm not saying that I know how to cure you, but these have really helped for me. And the first one, which seems really stupid, I know I talk about visualizations all the time, but they help me for some reason. Picture yourself for me <clears throat> driving on a, on a big road and you pass a billboard. And this billboard is a shitty thought. A very bad thought, a very bad idea. Maybe you should Google yourself. Maybe you should do this, right? You have the choice to stop. You can pull over, you can go down that horrible road, or you can just let that thought pass. Just keep driving. I'm not gonna tell you to meditate because I try meditating and I don't do it as often as I should, so I'm not gonna give you the advice I don't take for myself, but when you're learning to meditate, they talk a lot about just letting the thoughts just pass, just like water, just let it go by, don't let it stop, don't dwell on it, it's there and then it's gone. That's something that has really helped me a lot. Like I said, it's easier said than done. And actually in the description box, um, I am gonna put some Instagram account that gives you a lot of really interesting things to think about and, and recognize about yourself, whether it's self-love, self-doubt, etc. I never thought I was the kind of person who would screenshot motivational posts. Like that's not really my deal. I don't, I think they're kind of cheesy, but your girl has a whole folder of them now. <laughs> Favorited on my phone. Um, so just turn to those. They kind of help put you back on track. So I'm gonna put, I think it's called We The Urban. Um, they're my number one. Check the description box. And if you have any other calming, motivational, or like dealing with anxiety, um, different Instagram accounts, leave them down below. That would be incredibly helpful. We're working on it every single day, but I hope that it gets better for you. <laughs> okay, this one kind of made me sad, but it's so true. Um, taking care of yourself when you are sick and not even just sick whether you're going through a hard time emotionally and stuff like that. There are times when it's genuinely very scary. I remember I had a really bad health scare and I was alone in my home and I had to call Kurt and he had to take me to the hospital. But for the most part, I think most people are just talking about when they're vaguely sick, you know, um, where you have like a really bad cold or maybe a food poisoning or something like that. That really sucks. But in a weird way, I think that if you can get through it and you do take care of yourself well there's some part of you that's able to make soup or you know buy Gatorade pick a really really good movie for you to fall asleep to give yourself a really big pat on the back why do I feel tears coming in my eyes calm down Carrie pat yourself on the back right now if you have ever taken care of yourself while you're sick before it's it's a sucky thing and the fact that you 
were strong enough and you loved yourself enough to do it is something that I think we take for granted a little bit. As far as emotional things as well, not physically having anybody there is really difficult. If you're able to call someone and talk about it, um, definitely do. As far as if you really, you have no one to call, again, recognizing that there's a little piece of you that's strong enough to do something. Um, the fact that there was enough love in your system to get up and put on your favorite song or to get up and brush your teeth. And even if you felt like you didn't really care for yourself, if you went through an emotional time and you felt so alone and so sad and now you're on the other side of it, just think back and like, you did do something, like you got yourself through it. Um, and that's an incredible thing. I think that one of the reasons why we don't love ourselves as much as I think that we should is because we don't recognize how much we do for ourselves every single day. Even if you don't do your like self-care routine, which hell I don't, kind of think about it over like the next week, even just today as you're watching this, like think about the things that you do for yourself and um, thank yourself for it. Recognize it. I'm going on a really big tangent. Clearly I tried to self-therapy for a long time and <laughs> it's really rough but getting through it is a is a wonderful thing so. i'm gonna try and be quick about this one but this was a popular one and it was having a lack of motivation to do things by yourself and it's easier to procrastinate when you're by yourself and i 100 percent agree with this again this is why I started YouTube, so that I had something that got me out of the house, something that I could share. It made me schedule things. It's kind of like going to the gym, where if you actually go, you feel better afterwards, but you dread just the act of going. So sometimes it's a lot of just pushing yourself uncomfortably to just get out of the house and do something. But another thing that I like to do is before I go to sleep, I always have one thing that I know I have to wake up and do the next day. So like I went to sleep last night and I was like, mm, gotta film this video tomorrow. Um, or, you know, even if it's just doing laundry, cleaning the kitchen, something like that, giving yourself one item to wake up and do is really great. And somebody left a response along the lines of plan a date for your future self and she'll thank you for it. I thought that was a really, a really cute reply. So yeah. And the last two, so this one hit me really hard and I'm gonna try not to cry, but I know that I will. Um, a lot of people were saying that they feel awkward reaching out to their friends and they also feel awkward or upset when people don't reach out to them. For like the past couple of months, I've just felt so tired. Like answering comments are okay, but for some reason sending a message to someone that I know personally or like answering an email takes so much strength that I just don't have. And there have been so many messages that I've wanted to send of people like, I just I just saw this thing and I thought of you and I just wanted to say hi. And I've sat on so many of those messages in my head um, for literally months. I finally sent one yesterday to my friend. I walked by a cafe and I thought of her and I just wanted to say that I missed her and I didn't send that for like a month and I don't know why. And once I did, it was like, so nice you know like i know that i would love to receive a message like that just no matter how awkward it is everybody feels awkward right now you know like nobody has seen each other in a very long time no nobody is having a normal year and so there's no not awkward way to talk to people at this point like everything is so awkward even if you say like listen this is weird this is random this is awkward but i just wanted to say hi like i I was thinking of you the other day. Just think of how great you would feel to receive that, to like know that somebody was think like something reminded them of you and they thought to message you, like how, just how great that would feel. You can be that person too. So if, if you're sad that people aren't reaching out to you, maybe reach out to them. If anybody came to mind just now as I talked about this, why don't you message them right now and be like, hey, this is weird, but I miss you, or I hope you're well, or how are you doing? You can even say like, I don't know how to talk in 2020, but I just want to say hi. Why don't we try Zoom? Why don't we try Skype? Be that person. And yeah, it might be awkward, but it would probably make somebody really, really happy. So I hope that you do message somebody today. Yeah. <laughs> and last but not least, a couple people said that they miss physical contact or that physical contact is how they like to be comforted. One person actually replied this advice and I will second it because I know that it has changed Kurt's life. Weighted blankets, 
they don't mess around. I do not like to be touched. What like when I'm sleeping, I need to be ready to like get up and attack. I don't know why. Um, so I actually don't like to be confined, but Kurt loves it. And so we got him a weighted blanket for his birthday and he adores it. So this is random, but like if you are a person that really likes to be held, game changer. Check them out. They're, they're pricey, but end of the year sales. Just saying. That is a really interesting one. So if you are an extrovert, if you are someone who feeds off of physical touch, please give your advice down below. That would be excellent. Thank you. And then I'm just going to leave you with one reply that somebody sent in that completely helps me as well. Music really helps me because it makes me feel like the main character of a film and it's empowering. And I 100% agree. Um, if you do feel, especially when you're talking about like darker thoughts, overthinking, etc. Having music on is so crazy helpful. Like I always, I always need music in or a podcast or something like that. It transports you 100%. Definitely if you can get Spotify or Apple Music, I don't know if you have to pay for Apple Music. Something that I've been really doing recently is the Spotify radio. I will pick my favorite artist and then they'll have this playlist. Like I've been listening to a lot of Pale Waves. So Pale Waves Radio, and it has just a bunch of songs that you probably would like if you also like Pale Waves. So I've just discovered so much new music, and when I'm walking, it's just excellent. I hope that this was helpful at all. I hope that what you take away from this is it takes a lot of practice, and you're never going to be perfect at it. But also, most of the time, people are really inspired or intrigued by you. Um, if you are out and about by yourself, as long as you're feeling safe. Again, this isn't to touch on like general like actual safety issues but if you're out there and your biggest fear is just what people are thinking of you um as far as like judging you negatively they probably aren't and if they are that's their issue it's not your issue at all you can't wait for somebody else um to live your life so i hope that that helped any of you again i would love to hear from my extroverts because i can't get into your brain I just don't know how extroverts exist. So I hope that this opens a little discussion. Um, I look forward to reading your comments. Sorry that this was super long. Sorry that I lost my voice. <laughs> and um, yeah, thank you so much for your replies. Let me know if you want to talk about anything like this again. And yeah, I will uh, see you guys next time. Bye.